Nearly 80 years ago, the streets of Bordeaux were gripped with panic. Thousands of Jewish refugees were desperate to leave before the Gestapo arrived and the roundups began. Their main escape route was to cross neutral Spain to Portugal, but to do this, they needed Spanish transit visas. And the Spanish government had told the representatives aboard, therefore including my father, that they couldn't give any visas without sending the passport to Madrid. Yeah, without it taking weeks. It would take uh, days, at yeah. least. Yeah. So it was undoable. So he decided that the morally right thing to do was to disobey his government and began issuing these visas right and left to everybody coming in there. My grandfather, Eduardo, defying orders, opened the consulate doors and for a whole week, day and night, incessantly signed visas. A few steps away from here, your grandfather signed the passports permitting four members of my family to cross into Spain and through to Portugal and get a boat to the United States in June 1940. Two of these passports survived. Right. And so I have brought my father's, who sadly left us a few months ago. Oh, I'm here, sorry. Here he is as a little boy. <laughs> what was his name? Michel. Michel Balinski. Michel Balinski. There he must be something like three, three yeah. years old. And here you can read oh my God. the signature of your grandfather. That's amazing. He had incredibly neat handwriting. I love it, the fact he made it all one word. Yes. But I guess if you're signing many, 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 you'll make it all one word. Yes. And here's on my How grandmother's. That's your granny mother? That's my grandmother. You At can the see. Time. Yeah, actually, yeah, there we have a You definitely have a resemblance. They were all Polish. Jewish? Can I? Yes. Yeah. They went to France, and they were there in spring of 1940, and then they escaped at the last minute, basically, because not only was my great-grandfather Jewish, he was personally blacklisted by the Gestapo, because he was a prominent anti-appeaser activist. Oh, they really had to get out. Yes. I wonder how many people didn't get out. They got to Portugal, so, so they happened? lucked out. They got on a boat. And there That's he is, my father, in New York City with, with his, his grandfather. grandfather. During the war. How amazing. He founded UNICEF after the war. <gasps> really? Yes. How extraordinary. Yes. And my grandmother. And your granny. During the war, yes. Oh, could he? God, it's fantastic. I wonder how many wrote to those. Thank God. So I've never, you're the first person I met who had direct, <laughs> um, who's directly, who had, basically had a life because of my grandfather. One of the things that I've often thought about when thinking about the Holocaust is how much was destroyed. But then, the tiny consolation prize is then you meet one life that was saved, and that was a great family to have saved, because he goes, the grandfather then goes and invents UNICEF. And she now works for Médecins Sans Frontières. So there's, it's almost like one humanitarian act then breeds a whole a whole genealogy, a whole, a whole tree of other humanitarian acts, which is great.